we can post it out to YouTube. So I've got the recording on now. Um, so we'll be recording this 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 webinar, and we'll be posting it out to the the QMS YouTube channel. You can see last month's QIM um, session out there. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. As we get into this, um, you know, training is is a new area, a new is a is a new focus area for us. Um, we offer a variety of different types of training. This is our this is our free you know kind of fun based service um, that we are doing a monthly webinar on different topics. Um, so we have a schedule that we've put together. The upcoming webinars, just to to make a note in your calendars, um, is we're going to really in March go over QM reporting. Um, and we're not just going to focus on the QM reporting in ECC and the ALV grids and the forms and stuff you have. We're also going to see some of the advanced tools, Bob J. Business Warehouse, and we'll probably talk a little bit about HANA, since HANA is on the forefront of everybody's minds. Um, in April, right now, we're, we're you know if you're if you have uh, if you want to improve you know your your control of your suppliers and your sheeting materials, we'll be we'll be uh, diving into quality information records, um, where we can really start to control the supply chain on the procurement side, um, and force actions there. Um, you know, in May we'll also be talking about dynamic modification, skip lot processing. You know, part of the things my customers always ask me about is how can we see an ROI on quality? You know, everyone sees it as an overhead cost, et cetera, but how can we, how can we, you know, you know, start to, you know, reduce the cost of quality and the cost of testing and dynamic modification is, is a great tool for that. So we'll be sending out reminder emails on the webinars. Um, you know, a week or two before the webinar to get on your calendars. Typically, it is the last Friday of the month. Um, there is a Friday right around um, Memorial Day that we've got to be careful of. Um, so, but we'll be sending out reminders. Um, if you ever have any questions, you can email us at sap at qmsinc.com, and somebody will get back to you with the, the latest up-to-date schedule. It's also on our website. We also offer classroom-based training. You know, so if you're you're looking to to do like the traditional SAP courses and stuff, and go somewhere, be hands on, and have instructors and, and people helping you um, understand you know the basics and beyond. We offer we do offer classroom training, and right now the training sessions that are scheduled um, in March is the QIM training, where it really goes from you know how to create an issue and process an issue like we did last month to all the configuration BRF plus BCB et cetera. Um, there will also be a, an inspection processing and a quality notifications courses that are run in April and May. Um, so good things to mark on your calendar. If you need more information on any of those, please just uh, contact any of us at QMS, and uh, we can help you. Actually, I, I forgot to do my fun facts as we kick off this webinar and stuff today. Um, we've got about 80 people registered and, and signed up for thinking we're over, we're over it uh, looks like 60, 60 people right now, but what's really kind of in, interesting about the, the, the thing, and next month maybe I'll do a slide on this, is, you know, we, we're represented by 50 different companies. Um, a lot of companies in food, pharma, high tech, et cetera, um, and I, I don't have all the, the, the numbers on the actual the breakdown of the stuff, but um, the, uh, we also have, you know, we're represented by six different countries. And that's actually kind of what was kind of a neat fun fact is, you know, with the webinar today, we, we have people, of course, from the U.S., um, but we also have people from Europe and Belgium, et cetera. We have people from India, and uh, we have somebody from all the way over in Singapore. So welcome. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good night um, to everyone here today. So let's go to the next slide here. So this, this service is really brought to you by our training and special services practice. It's a new area of QMS that we offer. This group is a dedicated group that really focuses on two things. It's, it's focused on training services and special services. Training services we offer, we talked about the webinars that we do. We, do, we talked about the classroom-based training. I call that old school, where you come in and, and the instructor shows you how you're doing things. Um, we, of course, live in a different age today where, you know, the Internet is very prevalent, bandwidth is good, so webinars – and, and WebEx is a very easy, useful tool. So we have the on-demanding training, or as I call it, you call it. That's a, a training that you can contact us, and if you're interested in learning about anything, anything SAP, manufacturing quality, um, however, 
however little or however much, they'll train you on it. Um, and we'll work out customized training for you to do that. We also have videos in the QM area currently on different tracks, you know, like FMEA, QIM, uh, calibrations, general core training. So we have videos that are, are purchased for sale. They're different tracks with a variety of different things that you can go through. This group also offers what we call special services. Um, you know, one is remote consulting or consulting on demand as we need it. Um, they also perform health checks and project, project audits, making sure that best practices are being adhered to. So, um, you know, uh, so you can um, you can make sure that you know that that the project is functioning the way it should, and that that you're you're getting all the value out of the SAP um, software that you can. We also offer road mapping, where we'll talk about all the different functionalities and help you prioritize what's most important in your business. Um, so we have a team that does that, whether it's the training or special services. They're led by this fish. So if he's one of my friends out there, this fish's name is Wanda. So um, helping you kind of break out of the norm, uh, do different things. So um, we said we're going to have some fun. For some reason, I have the fascination, the fascination with goldfish lately on the slides. They look pretty cool, but Wanda's here with us and ready to go. The other thing I'm really actually excited to, to announce, you know, in our quest to continually drive more information out to our, our customers and our partners um, is our social media sites. So these are all the different social media sites. And again, if you, you need specifics, we can, we can get you specifics on these things. But you can see we, we have information at WordPress. We're in LinkedIn. We actually run two LinkedIn groups for manufacturing and quality. That quality LinkedIn group has a thousand members, um, and the manufacturing has over 500. Um, a great network, great place that you can go to find information. We have obviously have a QMS spot in that as well. Uh, we're on Facebook. Who isn't? Um, I watched the Social Network last week, and I was always like that. But um, yeah, we're on Facebook and, and posting information out there. We're tweeting. <laughs> who doesn't like to tweet these days? But uh, we're, we're we're getting information out there quickly. We talked about the YouTube channel, so not only do we post these webinars out there, but we're posting their content. Um, and then we're also on Google+. What I'm really excited to announce is, is our training and special services practice is really going to be driving a lot of information to these sites. Um, starting next week, we're going to have a theme of the week. It will be an area topic, um, something of interest. And we're going to be offering content on that theme of the week to these different spots. And we're going to help to, to um, establish conversations and, and stuff and get people really um, interested in a lot of this stuff. So uh, look for that happening if you have any questions on it um, or what, you know, what upcoming themes there will be. It will start with a blog, and everything else will then follow from there. So we're very excited about this and ready to start really getting more information and creating the buzz around quality and manufacturing in, Q, uh, in, in SAP. So with, uh, without uh, further ado, I will turn it over to Mr. Doug Norton just to kind of give him a, a quick introduction. Um, Doug is, has been within SAP and, and is specialized in the pharmaceutical area for, for many moons, as I had, used to have a friend say. So he's been around for quite a while. He is the, the QMS Manufacturing Practice Lead. Um, so he's involved in all the different manufacturing projects that we have from a QMS perspective. Um, really, his background is from the business, and, and he's learned and complemented his skill set with SAP. Happens to be one of the one of the most knowledgeable people on PI sheets and the use of X steps. So, Doug, I, I, I turn it over to you now. All right. Uh, thank you, Mike. All right. I'm back. Oh. So, just uh, again, like, uh, thanks, Mike, and thanks, Wanda. Keep the fish happy, Mike. Um, the um, like Mike said, I've been doing PI sheets and next steps since uh, '97, and, and we've done PI sheets in pharma, food, uh, different industries. So, guys, this this I think this will apply to a lot a, a broad brace of industries. Uh, again, before I was got into SAP, I was a plant manager, so I bring some of that knowledge of the shop floor and try to think about whenever we're designing PI sheets and how to interact with manufacturing to make it. Uh, simple enough, and then yet capture the information we need. So, 
uh, as we go through these as we go through these slides, uh, like I said, Mike's going to be online answering questions if you have them. So please route them to Mike. We'll try to uh, interrupt. Uh, uh, you won't interrupt us. You're going to let us help us make the presentation a little better. So if you got good questions, let us know. Um, like I said, we'll do uh, I'll do 10 or 12 slides. Uh, we'll, we'll jump out of the slide presentation and we'll do a very, very, very simple uh, PI sheet to show you some kind of look and feel. <clears throat> we'll capture some errors. We'll show you how the PI sheet kind of moves around a bit. So we'll jump back into the presentation and um, we'll show you some uh, what I'll call more unique or more enhanced PI sheets that we've built for different customers throughout the year. So this this whole idea here, guys, is to give you, a, you know, what, what a PI sheet can do. Um, you know what it is, what it can do, and then as you're going through this process, think about how you could implement PI sheets to your plant and how that would, or your locations, and say, how would this help me? So, you know, what is it, what it can do, and how it benefits you. That's our kind of the theme. So, with that, um, this this picture right here is to kind of just show you where PI sheets fit in the world. Uh, first off, PI sheets have been around for 20 years, so they're not new. They've been around for a long time. Um, so they fit a bunch of different industries. Now, we're using the term X steps because, oh, I want to say it's been, it's been probably seven or eight years ago longer that the, 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 the ability to make PI sheets with a tool SAP has come out called X steps. It's more, it's more uh, master data instead of moving it through your uh, dev, Q, and P environment. So instead of configuration, uh, it's more become more master data. But the, the, the beauty of this slide right here, it kind of shows you where PI sheets fit in the manufacturing space. So you, you know, of course, planned orders drive a process order. That process order, this guy over here, has a control recipe. Control recipes are the word in SAP that says, where do I want to display a PI sheet? So a process order could have one or many PI sheets. Think about your business process. Do I want to have multiple PI sheets or a single PI sheet? So that would be that control recipe, how I want it to uh, manifest itself. Now, um, messages, you know, in SAP today, you do a consumption messages, a 261. You do a 101 goods movement to make. So we can send those messages through the, the, the process order via the PI sheet. Um, and then, of course, we have function modules that we can actually do some more detailed modifications or validations with between the PI sheets and things like batch management or material movements or alarms or so. And I think the, the, the big thing about PI sheets is that, you know, every one of your operators has to start wearing this funny blue hat and overalls or they can't use a PI sheet. Just kind of make you guys hope you're laughing a little bit because it's, uh, we want to make sure that you understand that you're talking with the operators on the shop floor. The operator's going to touch the screen. We'll talk about what that looks like in a minute. But this PI sheet also fits there that it can talk to pieces of equipment. And I think that's uh, something that most people don't really understand or utilize is that um, we can introduce the, the scales to the shop floor directly through SAP. So whether I'm doing a weigh-in defense functionality or whether I'm doing a goods receipts and goods issues, I'm getting that weight from some kind of a scale, uh, whether we're using uh, OPC or MII, we have different ways to communicate directly to the PI sheet from pieces of equipment. So it makes those transactions more validated, more real time. So those are some of the beauties of uh, how a PI sheet works. So that kind of frames it up to what it, uh, where it sets in our environment. So the question I have is, that, you know, I just took some screenshots here of places I've worked where this is what this is how they communicated with the shop floor. Stuck a piece of paper out there and said, write, record, and you know, whenever you do um, things like this, you're prone to uh, you're prone to errors, you're prone to mistakes, and uh, you know, you record it on the shop floor on on day one, and then you put it in the system, you know, days or days or days later, and uh, that tends to make my inventory uh, not as accurate as it could be. So we're trying to get away from, to show you that we can get away from paper on the shop floor to make something more real time. If I make it more real time, I have the ability then to also look at things, expiry dates and retest dates and different things that may be more valuable. And uh, 
make it more uh, make it more validated system instead of just sort of writing it on a piece of paper. Uh, Doug, we have a question from Jim. Okay. His question is, how new is X Steps? Uh, they first implemented PI sheets many years ago. How can I tell if I'm using X Steps? Does he walk out into the snow and look at his tracks, or, or can you answer those two questions for him, please? Okay. So uh, <laughs> X Steps were, well, like I said, PI sheets 20 some years. X Steps, I think, were introduced in the um, around the year in around 2000, uh, 2001, somewhere in that time frame, if my memory is correct. Uh, if I'm an operator looking at a PI sheet, I would not know if my PI sheet was generated via an X step or if my PI sheet was generated what they call the they call it the PIC. Uh, um, there's a classical PI sheet generated uh, process uh, process instruction characteristics that, that that used to be before X steps come along. So the operator and the person using would never know. Now the person who's building those things would. Definitely no. So hope that answers the question, Mike. Yes, thank you. But but you're not going to find it in the snow. Not going to find it in the snow. It's a it's a building tool to design and create your PI sheets with. Thank you. So that kind of leads me to this next step. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the details of how this is built because we're going to focus really on what a PI sheet is and how it looks. But I just wanted to frame up or give you an overview of uh, the, the foundation of a PI sheet that's built on X steps. So in this first column over here, we have what I call my X step repository. So the repository is basically the building blocks that you use to um, to, to set up your to set up your X steps. And there's I call them I refer to them like Legos. So in in my PI sheet, I'm going to have something maybe like a um, a header, or I'm going to do goods issues, or I'm going to do goods receipts, or I'm going to do confirmations, or maybe I have special instructions. Those are X steps that you're going to build at a high level, whether it's uh, at your specific plant, or they could be for the entire company. Uh, uh, so those are things that are out there that could satisfy all the needs of your manufacturing process. So then the next bucket to the left, or to the right, is master recipe. So if you build a master recipe, then you're going to say this product has a header, but it has a good receipt of kgs. Uh, the next product may have a good receipt of eaches. So there's where you would go to the master recipe, and you would assign the building blocks from your repository that are specific or unique to that product. You could have things like mix times and mix durations, all the steps, you know, um, your manufacturing processes could be defined and the appropriate X steps assigned to support those manufacturing processes. So that's the master recipe. Of course, every master, every run has a unique process order. So the master recipe then passes information to the process order. So that process order is for a unique run of material. And then that process order, of course, has its unique PI sheet. So our topic today is really going to be just focused on that last piece because as you start the repository, master recipe, and then the process order, we're going to look at a unique PI sheet that an operator would execute on the shop floor. We'll also look at variables around that unique PI sheets and what we could do and not do. In our example here, you can see that you know we're, 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 we show an example how we're talking to a scale, but uh, th that's the kind of the topic today is just on the back side, not the not the build up to get here. So uh, the uh, the other thing we have dynamic icons up there. So if things are changing in the PI sheet, we can actually you know see that something like signatures have been made or errors have happened or things like that. So the uh, um, you know down here we're going to see where we're going to we're going to show a little bit later in the demo where we're actually doing some PI sheet. Uh, signatures inside the PI sheets. We'll do some execution steps. So just kind of think about think about that what the what the PI sheet allows us to do is that uh, you know we, we want to enhance that uh, business complex business process to make them a little simpler. So we can do that with the uh, PI sheets around the function module. 
So, uh, you know, we can call a function module in the background to check for uh, expiry dating. We can call a function module to check for some from information we want to make sure that it checks real time. So that's that first bullet point is that we can use function modules around this. Um, the other thing is that because we're not passing information through, uh, through from our ERP, from SAP to a uh, to an MES system like, uh, you know, I won't use names, but some of those other systems that sit on our shop floor, there, there's no integration. There's no passing through a, a middleware and there's no losing of data because we're, we're inside SAP. That's the beauty of that's the beauty of the PI sheet. It's you know there's only one or, there's only one source of truth and that's SAP. Um, we can uh, make it look and feel more we'll call MES like. So some of the the displays we have for the operators, whether we use some uh, icons or whether we use the uh, a, a prettier presentation, that it looks and feels more like an MES system that you would traditionally buy or go out and buy. And again. Um, Mike said this earlier, but with PI sheets, uh, we already this functionality you already own it when you have it when you bought ECC, so it's it's in there. You just got to understand how to turn it on and how to use it. Um, some of these events they can be triggered manually, or they can be triggered by event. And again, uh, you know, you, you hit an event and it triggers this function module to go do these things. And again, this is not this is not new stuff. This has been around a long, long time, but I don't think everybody quite understands how it works or how you can use it. So that's the point here is that it, it, it's, it all stays in SAP and we can use, we're using the, the, the more robust features of SAP to help us make our process work a little smoother. So here's an example of uh, where I said traffic lights. So down here at the, down here at the bottom, I, I, I scan a batch and I can go out and I can do a batch validation call and I can drive traffic lights to tell the operator that you know, green means go, red means stop. Uh, we can actually stop the process from happening if if we call one of those function modules in the background that says take this batch and go look at things uh, and, and then return a value. Um, you know, and putting EHS symbols on there is very visual to the operator that this material has some, you know, further requirements I got to worry about. Um, as, as we can, we calculate down. Here's what we can, we're looking at. A, this is just a way in dispense, though. We started with a certain quantity, and we ratcheted it down to our example here. We started with 700 grams, and we've weighed out 700 grams. Very visual, very visual that uh, uh, that, that the operator's done. So those are kind of you know, trying to keep the operator in charge of what's going on. Um, this here also is uh, we we have different. We can have things like way modes in the background so that. At this point in time, you're not the operator doesn't touch a scale. SAP is communicating to that OPC server, and talking to that OPC server, we're driving the scale tear. We're driving the scale to zero. We can do we can check the validity of that scale to make sure that it's in compliance. It's been accuracy text checked, or it's been it's within its calibration. So those are things are all another way of using a function module <clears throat> to go out and validate that the right piece of equipment that we're using is in the right status. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> here's an example of that, what I'll call that that way mode logic that we can build in. So this basically says it's a push button approach. So, you know, I'm an operator and I'm, I'm gowned up, I got gloves on, whatever. I don't have to worry about initiating a cursor in a field. I can just hit this button on the left-hand side that says process, process, and it will drive me through tear, zeroing, weighing, completion, and then at the end of the at the end of the process, you know, what have I done? I want to finish or I want to come correct. So those features can be inherently built in your system. Again, it's understanding how to set that functionality up. So as we've uh, again like I said earlier, we I've been putting PI sheets in companies since 1997 and some of the things that we Come and take away is that people don't really understand that SAP can talk to the shop floor equipment. Uh, you know, like we have lots of tools, whether it's the OPC server Mike talk, talked about, or whether it's the uh, MII that SAP allows us to do. There's different ways that SAP can talk directly to the shop floor equipment, and whether that's you know, we, we talk about how to set your architecture up to, to make that happen. But that's a uh, uh, that, that's a very powerful tool that SAP allows us to do. Um, 
that push button approach we talked about or creating a cockpit. Uh, one of my one of one of the clients is uh, is kind of was paint by numbers approach. So basically, guide me through the process so that I don't have to worry about making mistakes. So again, using PI sheets in the shop floor lets us take our operator through some of these very uh, detailed or precise approach. Um, uh, the, the third bullet there is that uh, this always seems to be a, I go, you go to a company and they talk about, we'd love to go to the next enhancer packer support stack, but we are so, uh, uh, we got so much stuff going on that we can never get there. And I would say that if we build this uh, PI sheets next steps correctly, the companies I've worked with in the past do on annual support stack and annual enhancement pack. So this has never got in the way of them upgrading to the latest version of SAP. So that's a big plus. Um, and then the, the bottom bullet point there is think about how you communicate with the shop floor via paperwork or whatever. You know, we're looking at how do we eliminate that large amount of paperwork? How do we eliminate that uh, um, that information that the operator is typing down? So uh, I don't know if you ever if you ever try to go to find paperwork after it's been uh, um, entered. Well, it's hard to it's hard to retrieve and also it has a lot of sometimes it has mistakes. So um, with that said, that's the kind of a, a process we can do to help eliminate that, that paperwork and put that in SAP. So this, this slide here is just to represent that, you know, the screenshots I have in the background are uh, Amigo Goods Receipt, Amigo Goods Issue, and the confirmation. So instead of going to three different screens, we can use PI sheets to help us do this. So with that said, I'm going to jump out of the presentation. I'm going to go into a PI sheet. And again, folks, this is a very, very, very simple PI sheet. Um, nothing, um, nothing but a goods issue and a goods receipt. And um, so we'll, we'll just talk you through the process. We'll actually trap a couple errors and let me see how this works. But um, let me, um, so here's a basic I'm SAP screen. The transaction to go to a PI sheet is CO60, find a PI sheet. Um, I'm going to filter or limit my range of PI sheets that I want to look at just so um, you know, I don't get a large list. So I'm going to just look, filter for the last few days. Um, I, have two, I have two PI sheets here. So we're going to go to this, uh, this guy right here. I, I highlight a line. I go to the, it's like, you know, Pencil means change, eyeglasses mean display, so we're going to go in and highlight a line. We're going to go to our PI sheet, and we're going to um, go through the, what we call the manufacturing process. So, um, Mike, are we still good? I mean, nothing, we're, we're still connected, correct? Well, we're, we're, we're very thankful for everybody that's still with us. Um, it seems to that, um, yes, everyone seems to be okay. I know we've had some audio problems if you're connecting via the computer or voice over IP, but with the dial-in seems to be working and everything, so uh, we, we seem to be okay for now, Doug. Thank you. Okay, very good. All right. So as, I, uh, as we talk about opening up a PI sheet, this would be different. Think about your PI sheet, the, the manufacturing steps. You would have uh, different different manufacturing steps could be inter introduced here with different phases. I got one I got one manufacturing step, again, a very, very, very simple process. Uh, and this guy right here, we're going to talk about the, the, the making of a product. There's the date and the time, the material. Um, if I wanted to have specific instructions to an operator, I could have that built in the mess recipe. I could type precaution. So, again, this is one of those that blank sheet of, a, a bank, a, a blank sheet of paper, we could start creating this thing. I, I work with companies where they said, I want you to create a PI sheet that looks exactly like my job ticket. And we went out and created a PI sheet that looked almost exactly like the job ticket, so it was very easy for the operator to, to, to migrate to SAP. Um, but in our world today, I'm going to just show you some, you know, uh, here's something we could use to potentially create a, remove a logbook off the shop floor. So this just asks me who I am. So this is going to be who's working on the room or who's working on this product. So again, the scenario that we have set up today, I'm in a validated system where I have digital signatures turned on and my user ID and password is required. So again, that little 
a little building block around the header of the process or, or the header of the header of the PI sheet just said this is working on I'm working on this order and there's the date and time that I started this process. All right? So that's kind of the header of what I'm going to do. Now, we open up this next manufacturing step. I'm going to do some goods issues. Um thinking about my world today is that either there's a you know, I like to do scans I like to have a uh, an RF gun in my hand or I mean a, a, a scanner in my hand that hooks up to the PC so operators don't type um, I don't have a gun in my hand today but uh, just to give you a visual representation um, I'm going to go I'm going to go grab a batch there's a little again one of our other functions we're going to click on the, the little button here that says uh, check PSA so PSA stands for production supply area this lets us see the stock that's available for this material for this run. So I'm going to click on it, folks, just so I can go grab the batch number. So, again, very traffic light driven. Uh, my world today, I've just gone out and I'm copying that batch number, so it's simpler for me. But in our, in our world today, the, the drum's in front of the operator. He points his RF gun or his scanner at the label or whatever, and he scans that guy in and when he scans it in it hits enter and again there you can see I have a I have a traffic light that says green is good red is bad here's the place I'm going to put in a quantity sorry I got it I got a, I got a, uh, a rejection so I got a quantity error so I violated a, I violated a rule. So you can see that I could build rules around this that I tried to use more than I had in my supply area. So are those done with ABOP or are those done in configuration? That Mike, that's done with uh, both configuration inside the PI sheet and then calling a function module that says, go check that quantity of material that's in my supply area. So at this point in time, in this example, the way we set this up, we're not looking at the plant stock we're only looking at the stock that's in that's been assigned to the, for this order so you're, it's a combination of configuration and, an, and a function module that SAP would provide to go call up to go look at your stock and because I'm in a validated system I'm going to then sign for my consumption and in the background folks what we're doing right now is we're doing a 260, a 261 movement just happened. So if you remember that very first slide we put together that says, I did message, a, a process message is sent. So in the background, SAP just said, go to this process, from this process order PI sheet, issue this batch, this material, this quantity, this order. So a 261 goods movement just happened in the background. All right. There's a question here as well, Doug. When you signed in initially, can you check qualifications on an operator during that sign-in process? Can I tell you that is a great question because I have a slide yes a slide later on that says yes I can I can I could have um, depending upon your setup of SAP if you have HR turned on it becomes very simple because we have everybody set up in the HR world that we could have some parameters or values that said this operator can only do these certain tasks. If we don't have HR, HR turned on, we'd have to find another way to build a, a table that said my operator can do these certain tasks or values. But yes, we can put rules around who can do what, and I can check at that time whether you're qualified to do this task. So great question. Um, so again, I'm going to do a just a, another check. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do that one more time just to so. You can see that I got more than one component I'm making, uh, or one component I'm using to make this product. Again, I just scan another batch, I hit enter, and I'm going to consume some inventory, and uh, the world is good. So the, the, the beauty of this right here is I'm doing things more real time. So uh, a lot of learnings we have from get to a client and it says, you know, I do stuff on paper. They actually do the work on Monday and we put it in the system on Wednesday and it expired or something on Tuesday. So 
this eliminates that delay. So my planners, my schedulers have a better view. I keep using the right, you know, I keep having a, uh, a better view of the uh, inventory as I go through my world. Um, Doug, you're obviously showing a, a simple example from the pharma world. Yes. Um, is there ways to dumb it down for our other industries that are on the phone that might not need a signature on every single issue? Because there are other Mike, ways to, to set up the PI sheet to be maybe more generic and it yeah, does so pretty strong. Mike, you could write, I'm, I'm going to write, whether I scan in a batch or whatever, I put a quantity consumed. I'm putting the signature on the end is my event to fire the 261, but I could just scan in material, scan in a batch, and have a push button here that says go. So we've done that in the past with different industries, different clients that don't require that level of detail. So it could make it very, very simple. So it could just be a, it could be a push of a button. Give me a, you could tell me the, the quantity you're going to move, and I could move that quantity. Again, whether you're batch managed or non-batch managed, those are things we'd have to talk about. But yes, those are things we can do. Uh, Here's one of the examples I'm going to present to you is that uh, all right, I hit enter here on my batch, and just FYI, I presented this scenario we got it. We're trapping an error that the sled date of this batch is, is expired. So basically we put a rule in place that says, I don't want to use expired material. Now, because it's real time, uh, because it's real time, I could go to that batch. I could go to that batch change the sled date, and then come back and process. Uh, in the sake of time, I'm not going to do that today, but I could go back out and update the batch and come back and I could process this. It would, it would just pick it up because it, it goes looks real time at the batch. Every time I do the function call, it says go to the batch, find current information, check my validation rules. If I pass, I proceed. If I don't pass, I present an error. So, again, real time. Um, this here is a, this next little bucket I'm going to show you right here is what we'll call unplanned consumption. Um, so I don't know about your world, but some industries say that, you know, during the manufacturing process, I didn't have this item in the bomb. I didn't have it in the order, but lo and behold, I need it. Or some companies turn around and say things like, I don't know, um, bags and twist ties and oddball things that I want to keep inventory of, but I don't want to go through the process of putting my bill of materials. I could consume them right here. So, again, this is just basically to say I'm going to put in a material and uh, put in material in a batch, and uh, the batch I'm going to put in, you know, I've got a little cheat sheet over here, guys, I'm looking at so I can uh, type it in. But uh, in, in, our, in our production world, we could either have a, a – barcode, we could have a uh, um, some kind of information that would allow us to, uh, um, instead of typing, scan. And that's, again, I, I can't stress that enough. My, uh, my world is always, uh, let's let the operator do is, uh, let's prevent him from, uh, let's, pre let's remove the information so that uh, he can be more successful, so we can try to present him with um, um, Simpler processes. Uh, this require this this example right here. I have to put something in here. I, I have to read. This is a required uh, entry. Just in this example, you can't proceed without putting that required entry in. Oh, and I've actually put in a bogus storage location. I fat fingered. So Doug, we have another question. Sure. The question is, it's called a PI sheet, but can it be used in discrete manufacturing? Another great question. Yes. Uh, I would say, in a, I want to say five, six years ago, SAP started uh, putting PI sheet availability in uh, the discrete world. So, yes, it can. So, you can use PI sheets with process orders, or you can use PI sheets with production orders. And then the last thing I'm going to tell you here is that, uh, you know, the quantity produced. So based upon how we render the PI sheet for the operator, it says, you know, here's my material, here's my material description, here's the order quantity and the batch that was produced, or that batch that's, the batch that's going to be produced. Again, all rendered from through the PI sheet from the process order, and then, you know, you just tell me the quantity. Again, 
this quantity right here. I could do multiple goods receipts against the same order. I could get this information from a scale. However this works, in our example here, it's just an entry. But um, if I can find a way to get that information uh, brought forward, I sure could do that. Um, and again, you're seeing me type every, my you're seeing me type my name and password every time because we've got signature strategies turned on. That's not a requirement. It's just a functionality that we've got turned on in this environment. Um, I could close this. I could try to close this PI sheet right now. Say I'm done with it. But uh, just to let you know that we've got also um, we got functionality that says this step can't be completed. Why can't it be completed? Because I've got open lines up here I haven't processed. So we got logic that says. You can't sign off and say you're done until you've filled out uh, something on every one of those seconds above. So I, I wanted to jump you out and show you some what I'll call basic PI sheet 101. And all we did here, guys, was do goods issues, goods receipts. And in the background, whenever I signed off for my goods issues or goods receipt or I signed this line, I can send a confirmation in the background. I can send a final, uh, I can send a final confirmation. In the confirmation fee, uh, screen, I can set the flag that says cancel all reservations. So if this order didn't consume all the components that were reserved against it, I could wipe my reservation slot clean. So again, more real time to keep my planning and my scheduling folks as current as they can be. So that was, again, I, I, like I said earlier, we're going to go through eight or ten slides. We're going to go just do a quick goods issue, goods receipt functionality inside of a PI sheet, and then I'm going to take you back now to a kind of finish off the PI sheet to show you what other things we've done for other clients that kind of make you think, could I use this or not use this in my purpose, in another world? So um, here's a PI sheet where we hit a button and we call our SOPs. We could call an SOP, we could bring a picture of what this thing's supposed to look like when it's done, what, it, you know, so again, if you can think about it, we can potentially bring that to you. So again, just a PI sheet jump or a, that pulls back information related to an, an SOP or a picture or whatever file you can, whatever media file you can have us provide. Here's an example where this top one here, I just showed you a, a, a batch goods issue. You saw me do that on the PI sheet. So that's very, very simple. but. Here's another, this one I got below is another kind of goods issue example to where the operator just said what, I, what I'm returning. So imagine that in this environment the, the company said I'm going to deliver 100,000 whatever to my supply area and then the operator says I'm going to turn 10,000, return you 10,000. So all, all he does is tell us what he's returned. We would calculate that if I brought you 10,000, if I brought you 100,000, and I return 10,000, you've consumed 90,000. So some of that thought process to we could make it simpler on the operator to say what was supplied, what was returned, will help you calculate the, the, the goods issue. So different ways of doing the same goods issue process depending upon the business process that's at hand. Doug, another question? Sure. Um, actually, it's probably even better you just highlight it this way. Um, the question is that the PI sheets that you're showing don't look a lot like the historical PI sheets that we're using. You know, you're able, I take it you're able to change those colors, fonts. Yeah, that's, you're exactly right. So what we've done with, uh, um, I'll say that the standard blue PI sheet that has uh, what I'll call the, kind of the drab, we're, we're trying to make the, the PI sheet become more user friendly and remember earlier I said more MES looking. So Yes, those uh, that good receipt tab on this good receipt, different variation. So we have the ability to insert what I'll call um, different icons that allow my PI sheet to look, I don't know, prettier, more acceptable. So, you know, this different ways to present it to the operator so it kind of stands out and it splashes and says, this is what I'm going to do here. I'm doing a good receipt. That green on my screen right now really stands out. Or this green with a way bar, but with the with the yellow bar above it, really would talk about, you know, it looks different. So, 
so that's the, the beauty of that. Yes, we can, and it, it drives that home as far as presenting to the operator a much better visual. Um, here we're just doing a different variation of a good receipt, but uh, what I was going to try to drive here is that you can see, like on the previous one about doing a goods issues, this is a good receipt where I'm talking about full palette. So based upon master data, every time the screen gets created, every time a line gets created, we present a full palette value. And he'd have to click on a button to say, nope, this time I'm going to do a partial palette. So again, master data is driving the quantity that shows up on the PI sheet so that if every time he's doing a full palette, like you said, Mike, early, I, I could have it to where this here is a signature, but you could create the full palette line and you could say one full one line, full palette, complete. Full palette, complete. Full palette, complete. So if there's no requirement to sign, all the operator is doing is hitting buttons and I'm doing good receipts. Um, so those are, again, different. Uh, uh, that's that's kind of the a full palette process. This here is a good receipt down below. This one, we've used a way mode, so we're actually integrating with the scale and you can see we've got gross net and tear so the operator hits you know process button so if you think about a way mode um, what's this when you say way mode how does the operator interact with the scale so my example is you start off by hitting the button on the scale and says make it zero then you put your full container on there and then says okay then I either type in my tear weight, or in this case, I'm doing a good receipt. I type in my, my tear weight, or I have a known tear weight derived from a material master. So those are things that we can set up in a PI sheet world that would allow us to very simply do a good receipt interaction with the scale. Now, again, to the back side of this, we have a signature not required depending upon the industry you're in. Can you implement this with a touch screen? Could you implement this with a touch screen? Uh, Mike, we have played around with touch screens, but typically um, the industry I've been working in, I've got operators with gloves and gowns and heavy things on, so they're not so good about being specific to touch screen, but you could introduce the touch screen, yes. Because all I'm doing, when I'm clicking the button, I could introduce touch screen functionality. But again, the industry you're in would drive whether that's going to be make sense to you or not. Good question. Um, here's some QM integration. We've got, uh, um, you know, uh, we're confirming hours here. Um, so in this case, think about hours confirmation. Um, down here at the bottom, I've allowed you to type in the hours that you're using in this resource. So you could manually type in the hours. Or, like I was doing, like I explained earlier, if you have, if you wanted to, quote, back flush your hours at the standard, you could just sign and we could call that confirmation in the background. So different flavors, this company here said, I don't want to use the, 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 the default. I want the operator to tell me how many uh, hours he's actually doing this, you know. So that's, again, we're getting more specific here about uh, recording confirmation of hours. Here's to that question earlier. I had a button on the PI sheet, so I'm going to back up in one second. I, did, I guess I could have showed you. I click on a button. This button maybe is something that looks simple like that right here. And in the background, I call a transaction. I call QE51. I call QA0. I, I call one of those QM transactions, and based upon the information from the PI sheet, I know the inspection lot. I know the material. I know the batch. So the operator doesn't have to go into the quality transaction and record this data. I pass it through through the push button inside the PI sheet and present him right here with the results recording. So at this phase or operation of manufacturing, I want to do these recordings. So at this step of the operation, we got we could jump to a recording screen. Two operations down, I could do the same button but I could recording different results, so I'd bring him to the same record. I'd bring him the same results recording screen, but it would have different results based upon the different operation. Did I explain that well enough? Everybody shaking their head yes. I'm assuming. 
So all I'm saying is that the question earlier, yes, we can jump right from a PI sheet into record the quality results, and then we could return back and be back in the PI sheet to finish manufacturing processes. Um, in the uh, this this here is about material reconciliation. So a lot of times we have clients where they're going to more in the, this is kind of more in the packaging line, but they want to talk about drums and bags and anything that they want to know that I have to have a, uh, even labels. I want to have a range of acceptance. So again, you can see across here we talked about what was staged, what was produced, what was consumed, return, loss. We, we're capturing all that information. So this is not manually entered at this stage of the game. This is derived from up above. So when the warehouse guy brought me product and put it in my PSA, I could populate the staged area. When I did my goods receipts, I could populate the produced. Now the consumed, in this case, it's a one-to-one -one relationship because I got 6,500 produced and I got 6,500 consumed. But you know, you could consume two of these every time you made one widget or three or five, whatever. So to understand, I could drive this logic to say stage quantity, produce quantity, drove my consumed quantity. By the way, the operator told me, remember that section? He said, I'm returning this back to the warehouse. So then I have, have you know, the operator then told me some kind of a scrap loss. He wrote off, and then we could do unaccountable, whatever that information, we can drive that from up above in the PI sheet, populate it in our reconciliation table, and then drive an accountability. And this range is driven from, again, a material master setting and the characteristic view of the material is somewhere that says, For this material, I need to be between 98 and 102. And by the way, when we did our calculation in this example, you know, we were 98.9. So, again, another icon that says green means go, we passed. So um, those are things that, again, we've done with other clients depending upon their needs. Uh, here, is my, here is my point about driving my operator qualification. So where the operator signed in, we could have that continuous check of, you know, every day the operator is signed in or they sign in by shift. We could go out and call and say, does that operator meet the requirements to be doing this operation. So we could link all that together and either prevent the operator from signing in, you know, but those are things, yes, we can do. Um, here's time event. So in this world right here, we've, uh, at this company, we decided to, uh, they wanted to track up and down time. So in the material, I mean, in the PI sheet, whenever the process stopped, they would just hit this uh, red stop sign button. And then at that point in time, we actually put together a little drop-down screen that says, why did you stop? A reason. So in the shift or break or quality, sheet, you can see that we defined reason codes for why we stopped. End of shift, end of day, quality reason. And then he, to click on the uh, uh, start up again, he clicks on the icon to start again. And then all we're doing is tracking the time between the start and the stop very easy then at the end of the day to run a report that said my process order said it was supposed to run for you know 27 hours well I had 30 hours of uptime and I had so many hours of downtime so you can then go back and track the, uh, uh, the, the actual durations now that's manually interacting with this remember my PI sheet overview we talked about connections you can connect pieces of equipment directly to SAP that we could track and we could have those up and down times be tracked without the operator involvement. So this is a this is a more a manual effort. The operator starting to stop the PI sheet. We could also track that in the background without the operator being involved. So some of the different flavors that we were doing. So Mike, with that, that was kind of my PI sheet 101 to show you what's possible, what we've done other clients, and again, uh, hopefully that the, the, the demo gave you some I you know, kind of a flavor for what basic, as basic as you could make it. So with that said, Mike, I'm open to questions or suggestions. Okay, yes, yeah, so if you have any questions now, please um, use your chat function um, to the panelists or enter it in the question and answer area. Doug, I think it was, was very great, uh, a good overview of kind of the capabilities of PI Sheets. As, as we know, there's a lot of capabilities you can Use them as simple as you'd like. You can also make them as complex as you 
as you need them to be. Uh, we find them a lot in, you know, our, the requirements for them a lot in our pharmaceutical or regulated industries, food, pharma, um, chemicals tends to be where we see these quite a bit. However, any industry, any customer that's really looking to simplify um, the data entry from the shop for, PI sheets are, are definitely a candidate. 